Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths in the first year. Here we're looking at simultaneous equations on graphs so you can answer questions from exercise 3c. So basically when you solve a pair of simultaneous equations you find out where the two graphs intersect. So we can find the answer to these simultaneous equations by just sketching a graph and finding out where they intersect. Now, these two graphs here are pretty tricky to sketch, actually. Let's show you a little technique for how you would sketch these graphs. The technique is to set one of the letters equal to zero. So just ignore this 2x for a second, because x is zero. And we're going to find out the y value that will set this equation equal to um, 10. So when, x, when y is 10 over 3, then we're going to get a crossing point on the... Um, x-axis here, not on the y-axis here. And when y is equal to 0, x needs to be 5, so we've then got another point on our x-axis here. So effectively, these two things here can be considered, can be considered as coordinates. 0 for the x-coordinate and 10 over 3 for the y-coordinate. And same, similar here, 5 for the x-coordinate and 0 for the y-coordinate. So you know two points that the graph are going, is going through. And given that we don't have any squared terms in this graph here, then we can just draw a straight line through those two points there. And we can do the same for the second equation as well. So set one of your letters equal to zero. Find out what the other letter needs to be to make the equation equal. So y in this case needs to be minus four when x is zero. And when y is equal to zero, x needs to be four thirds to make um, the equation equivalent. So plot these two coordinates, you've effectively got a coordinate at 0, minus 4, and at 4 thirds, 0. Join those two coordinates together with a straight line, because we don't have any x squared terms in our equation, and the solution to these simultaneous equations will be the point at which these two graphs intersect. Now drawing this graph carefully, you'll get the coordinates of 2, 2. So you can also find this algebraically like we did in the first video, or sketching the graph um, can sometimes work for you as well. Right, it can also work with quadratic graphs as well, but we have to be a bit more careful about how we draw this graph here. Let's draw the first graph just like we did previously. So x equals 0, y needs to be 3, and when y is equal to 0, x needs to be 1.5 to make this equal make this expression equivalent. Plot those two coordinates and we get a straight line through those because we haven't got any x squared terms here. Now we can't do this with the second equation here because there is an x squared term in there and it's going to be a u-shaped graph. So what we can do here, the best way to plot this graph, is just by a table of coordinates. So remember we did this at GCSE, we set x to be the coordinates minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. And then we plug those numbers into the equation to work out where the y coordinate is going to be. So just doing the first one, minus 3 squared is 9. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9 as well, plus another 1 that will give us 19. And you do exactly the same thing for the whole list of coordinates. And then you can use those coordinates to help plot your graph. And what you'll find is two intersection points here. Generally, that's the case for a quadratic and a linear graph. Not always the case, but mostly the case. And here, if you were to plot this graph exactly, you'll find you've got coordinate up here of minus 1, 5, and down here, 2, minus 1. OK, so what we're going to look at now is the conditions upon which you have either two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. You can see from this graph here, if we were to move it any further to the right, we would continue to have two solutions. If we moved it just a smidge bit to the left, then we would only have one solution where it touches it at a tangent. And if the graph was all the way, say, over here, then we would have no solutions. So going back to the discriminant. Now, the discriminant helped us find... Uh, how many roots we had for a given quadratic function. So we can use this in exactly the same way for a pair of quadratic graphs and a line graph. 
So, just like we have here, b squared minus 4ac is going to be greater than 0 when we set the two equations equal to each other and set that equation equal to 0. So let's show you how this works. OK, we just go through this beforehand. So b squared minus 4ac will be the case when the graph touches the quadratic graph um, at a tangent, either upside down um, or, or a standard U shape. And b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0 when the two graphs don't intersect at all, such as this or such as this. OK, in order to, get, to create this b squared minus 4ac, you need to set the two equations equal to each other or substitute one into the other. In this case here, we're going to go through an example where we have y equals 2x plus 1 as our straight line graph and a more tricky quadratic graph, kx squared plus 2y plus k minus 2 equals 0. And we're told here it has exactly one touching point. And we need to find the value of k. So the way we create the b squared minus 4ac to get us started is we're going to have to substitute in this equation here into the value of y here. So from your two equations, you've got to create one common equation to help solve. Now, sometimes this is in x or sometimes this is in y. It doesn't matter. The same b squared minus 4ac rule works. So substitute your equation in and we get kx squared plus 2 lots of y, but y was 2x plus 1, minus, uh, so plus k minus 2. And now expand the terms that we get here and simplify. So we get kx squared plus 4x plus 4 plus k equals 0. So now that we've created one single equation out of our two equations, either by setting them equal to each other or by substituting one equation into the other, now we use our piece of information that we have exactly one touching point. So in this case, when we have exactly one touching point, we know that b squared is going to e b squared minus 4ac is going to equal zero exactly. If the question was two turning, two, not two turning points, two intersection points, then we would know that this is greater than zero. And if we were told there are no touching points or no intersections, then we know that this would be less than zero. So it's very similar to the work we did on the discriminant in quadratics. So substitute your values in, noting that some of these are going to be letters and some of these are going to be numbers. And we get 4 squared minus 4 times a times c. And we're going to get here 16 minus 4k squared equals 0. So rearrange, divide through by 4, and square root both sides. And remember, when you square root at this point here, it's positive or negative. So k is either equal to 2 or minus 2. OK. As k must be positive, ah oh, yes, it does say in the question here, given that k is a positive constant, we have to take the positive value of k here. So given that we know that k is 2, we're going to move on to part b of this question, which is find the value of k. For this value of k, find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So what we'll do is we're substituting k as 2 here and 2 here, and solve these two simultaneous equations. We've already done a lot of the work and we've rearranged our two simultaneous equations to get this. So carrying on from there, substitute k is equal to 2 into these two equations. Divide through by 2 because they're all a common factor of 2. Um, next thing to do would be to factorise to solve these quadratic equations. And we get x is minus 1. Now that definitely makes sense that we've got a repeated root here because it is touching the graph only at one point. So I'd be surprised if we got two separate solutions out of this. Okay, so given that k equals 1, um, find the y value as well. So substituting uh, x equals minus 1 into any of the equations, probably the first one would be easier. And we get y is equal to minus 1. So our tangent or our touching point on our line graph onto our quadratic graph is minus 1 minus 1. 
Right, your turn then. Have a go at um, this question here. Pause the video and uh, see how much you can do. Right, okay then. Let's have a go at answering this question then. So question two. The first thing we need to do is use graph paper to draw accurately the graphs of 2y equals 2x plus 11 and this graph here on the same axes. So I've done this uh, very quickly here. The way I would have done this if I was sketching it out would probably to use um, y equals mx plus c. So in this case here, this equation here could be turned into y equals x plus 5.5. So that would be just a straight line gradient of 1 through 5.5. And with this equation here, can we factorize it? 2x and x. Um, let's put the minus 5 here and the plus 1 here. So we'll get a solution here of x equals minus 1 and x equals 5 over 2 which is exactly what we've got here and here. And I know that my y-axis intersection point is at minus 5, which is what I've got here. So here are my two equations, my quadratic one and my linear one. The next part here, b, is to use your graph to find the coordinates of the points of intersection. So I believe this here would be minus 1.5, uh, 4. And the second point up here is going to be uh, 3.59. Verify your solutions by substitution. Okay, so now what we're going to do is substitute. Um, well, what we could do here is we'll take y equal to x plus 5.5 and y equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. And given that these y values are equal to each other, we can just set the equations equal to each other. Um, so we get x equals 5, so x plus 5.5 equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Now we've got a 5.5 here, that's not pretty. So we'll double the whole equation. So 2x plus 11 equals 4x my x squared minus 6x minus 10. So we've doubled everything there to get rid of the decimal. Uh, take everything on to the right. So 4x squared minus 8x um, minus 21. And let's attempt to factorize this now. Given that we've got minus 1.5 and 3.5, it looks like we could have a 2x and a 2x, and uh, if that one needs to be minus 1.5, then I would need a plus 3 here, and I would need a minus 7 here for the 3.5. So x equals minus 3 over 2, or x equals 7 over 2. Let's just check that that bracket worked, so we'll get minus 14x, add 6x, so that gives us minus 8x green. So now that we've got x equals minus 3 over 2, let's now, so that's x equals what, minus 1.5. Let's add on 5.5 and we will get, so substituting x equals minus 1.5 back into one of these equations. So just adding on 5.5 here and we're going to get 4. And for this one here, x equals 3.5. Sometimes it's easier to think of these as top heavy fractions, sometimes decimals. In this case, I'm going to go with decimals and substitute that back into one of the equations and we're going to get y equals 9, which is exactly what we wanted for our pair of coordinates. Okay, right, so have a go at the rest of the questions from exercise 3c. Remember, re watching this video is only 10% of the learning. The other 90% comes from you having a go at questions, um, really persevering over them, and asking your teacher for help if you get stuck. Right, thanks for watching.